Hello, my name is Chris Durgans, and in today's experiment, we will be taking either methyl or ethyl pyruvate and convert it into an amine through reductive aminating using benzylamine as a nitrogen source and sodium triacetoxyborohydride as a hydride source. Methyl and ethyl pyruvate are an alpha keto ester. Benzylamine will act like a nucleophile and attack the more electrophilic ketone group over the ester group. After three subsequent proton transfers, the aminium ion that forms is not isolated, but in fact is rapidly reduced with sodium triacetoxyborohydride. By facilitating proton transfer, the use of acetic acid catalyzes the reaction. So before we get started, um, if you look at the procedure, you're going to add one millimole of either methyl or ethyl pyruvate, one to one millimole of benzylamine, and three mils of DCM, and one to one millimole of sodium triacetoxyborohydride, and one to one millimoles of acetic acid to a test tube. So before we add any of that, we need to work up how much we um, are aiming for. So it depends on whether you use methyl or ethyl pyruvate because um, they both have two different molar masses. Methyl pyruvate has a molar mass of 102.09 grams per mole and ethyl pyruvate has a molar mass of 116.12 grams per millimole or grams per mole. So um, depending on which one you're using, you'll need to use their molar mass to get how much we need um, of the rest of the things. So we'll go ahead and display the math here. All right, so now that we've done our calculations, we're gonna go ahead and mix, get our, so I'm gonna use methyl pyru pyruvate. Um, so this will be for methyl pyruvate. You do the same exact thing if you're using ethyl, it's just a different molar mass, so you, the amounts will be different. Okay, so it, it's the same workup for both methyl and ethyl, it's just a different molar mass, so your calculations will be a little different. So like I said, this is gonna be for methyl pyruvate. So um, we want around 102 milligrams. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to weigh that out. I got a beaker to hold my test tube. Um, you can use a smaller test tube than this. This is what I had. So um, go ahead and tear it and then we'll get our methyl pyruvate. Here it is, methyl pyruvate. Right, it's a little over of what we want, but we'll go ahead and record that. All right, I've also added our micro star bar. So since we got our mass of our methyl pyruvate, now we're gonna add 1.1 millimole equivalent of benzylamine. Now that, because we have that calculated as well, so now we're gonna add it to our test tube. I went ahead and tore um, or tear our scale so that way we just are recording the mass of the benzylamine. Right, and that's our mass of our benzylamine. Okay. 
So 0 0.136 grams. Now we want three mils of DCM. All right, now we need 1.1 millimole of sodium tricetoxyborohydride. Tri Again, we're gonna calculate how much we need of that. So there's our sodium tricetoxyborohydride. So I've noticed a lot of these have tape around them. When you are done using them, so you'll like untape it and once you're done you'll tape it tightly back we want these all sealed up real um real close okay so now again i've tore my scale again because now we want to get our sodium tri triacetoxyborohydride but this is a powder i'm going to go ahead and move this where this is a powder uh, i'm going to put it in a weigh boat first in case we need a get some out or what not what have you put it in a way boat So that is our final mass for our sodium triacetoxyborohydride. All right, now we're gonna add one to one millimole of our glacial acetic acid. Be extremely care careful because this is very corrosive. Um, so we've already done that calculation as well. So we're gonna work that up. So about um, four, yeah, about four or five drops is all you need. All right, go ahead and record that mass. Um, so now that they are all mixed in our test tube here, we are going to um, put it on a stir and let it stir for about 15 minutes at room temperature. All right, now that our solution's been sitting for 15, or stirring for 15 minutes, we are now gonna work it up um, by adding three mils of saturated aqueous sodium bicarbonate. And then we're gonna transfer the organic layer to the, uh, this new test tube. Alright, so you can see two distinct layers. Again, we're going to extract the aqueous layer, or I'm sorry, we're going to extract the organic layer and put it into our new test tube. Alright, so this is our organic layer. We have removed it, so I'm going to put it aside. And now we're going to take three mils of DCM, which I have here, and we're going to add it to our aqueous. So our aqueous layer and then um, extract the organic layer again and add it to add it to this test tube here all right so again you can see two distinct layers so again we're going to take the organic layer which is our bottom layer here and add it to this test tube here. 
All right, so those are our, that's our organic layer. So now we're going to add, um, we're gonna dry it with anhydrous sodium sulfate. So we're gonna dry it with this. Um, after we're gonna dry it, we're gonna decant it or filter it and, and, ev and evaporate the rest of the DCM off to get our product. Just gonna add a little bit to dry it. All right, so now we're going to go decant it. All right, so before we decant our product, um, I'm going to get a mass of the beaker I'm going to decant it in. So that way when it dries, we can just get a, go ahead and get a final mass by subtracting that mass from this mass. All right, we've decanted our liquid. Now we're just going to dry off the DCN. All right, so our product has dried. And now we're gonna get a final mass. All right, so 14.178 grams. Again, we're gonna subtract that from uh, the mass of our empty beaker to get the final mass of our product. Um, again, it's 14.178 is our final mass. We are now going to analyze the product by infrared and mass spec.